if you take the documents written in the last quarter of the 18th century by William Dixon, his two books that dealt quite extensively with Barbados, he enters into the space of the cultural behavior of the Africans in Barbados. They are seen traveling day and night from one end of the island to another to attend parties, functions, funerals, to attend to all of their cultural affairs. No other island would have tolerated this. No other island would have tolerated this. In fact, some of the slave owners have said that we have given our Africans so much cultural freedom that the slave owners and the other islands will be horrified by what they consider to be our relaxed, our relaxed military rule. But the slave owners in Barbados knew that all they had to do was to consolidate the military structure around the island and allow the Africans freedom within the island to engage in these activities. Because if they shift their struggle from cultural rights and cultural autonomy to a higher level, then they would encounter the might, not only of the British Army that was at the garrison, but also the white militia and the free colored militia that supported them. So the 18th century, we see systematic references to the unfolding of this African cultural autonomy in which the crop over festival and related festivals play a very important part. And we have three or four very good descriptions of these crop over festivals. We have very good descriptions of the music they play. We have descriptions of the clothing that they wore. We have a description that they would dress in their ethnic traditions, where each ethnic group, whether they were Mandingos, Yorubos, Fulanis, uh, Igbos, and so on, would wear the ethnic identification in the clothes, and we have references to that. We have references to how these parties were organized. Some of them, some of them would pay as you enter. Some of them you had to bring something. <laughs> but all of those contemporary and modern forms of organizing took place. So in the end, what is interesting is that when the rebellion of Bassa came in 1816, the official report of the government of Barbados said that the rebellion was organized in these parties. These parties that were taking place on weekends at Cropover and on weekends around the island became the incubator, the infrastructure within which the black people were able to plan from parish to parish, plantation to plantation, a national rebellion. They used the environment of Cropover and of parties to meet to organize. So when, when the slave owners thought that these crop over parties and festivals were essentially psychological release, were essentially cultural exuberance without political intent, since they believed that this was a way of allowing their enslaved people to relax and get ready for work, within the context of cultural revolution, political revolution was being planned. And that is interesting. So that the government of Barbados's official investigation into that rebellion juxtaposed those two positions. We gave them cultural freedom. We allowed them to have these parties. We allowed them to travel across the island for fets. We allowed them to all have the crop over celebrations and to play their music late into the night. They complained about how they were unable to sleep because all this drumming and so on going on all through the night. They complained about that. But they thought that all of that was in lieu of a nonviolent approach to freedom. So the report therefore juxtaposes the cultural space as a non-political space, but for the Africans, it was the most political of all places. So that in the end, they were able to report that the final planning of the rebellion took place at a party at the River Plantation. And they knew exactly 
how to research this. So when we look at crop over then and the references we have in the 18th century, um, and we have some interesting um, we have descriptions of, of lyrics, uh, there is an interesting poem, uh, I think it's from the 1730s or 40s, by Nathaniel, who writes out this lyrical description of the crop over culture and of the and of the, the exuberance of dance and song and poetic expression. And all of this took place 80 years before the Bustle Rebellion. And right through you have the writings of people like Bailey, who visited Barbados, uh, Pinkhart, who gave some very interesting descriptions of crop over Barbados. And these narratives are very, very useful. We have information on specific estates and the records of the Codrington slave plantation. There are references in there to the manager providing cash and resources to the slaves on the estate to have their crop over festival. We have references in the Newton Plantation documents. We have references also in the documents relative to the Bell Plantation, which was owned by the Earls of Hayward. And in these plantation records, we have references to the organization of the crop overs. But it would be a mistake not to put the emergence of crop over festivals and their related expressions into parties outside of the context of the military defeat in the 17th century and the long planning that took to finally bring this island to a revolutionary standstill in terms of black freedom. The culture space, the culture war was first of all it was won, then it became the platform for the political revolution.